This is DW News coming to you live from Berlin. A new breakthrough in lunar exploration. You're looking at the first ever photo from the surface of the dark side of the moon taken on a mission today by the unmanned Chinese spacecraft. We'll have all the details in just a moment. Also coming up, U.S. Democrats take over the House of Representatives today, allowing them to block much of President Trump's agenda. What does that mean for Donald Trump and the current government shutdown? We'll hear from our correspondent in Washington. And shares in Apple take a tumble as sales figures show Chinese buyers losing their appetite for the iPhone. Plus, aiming for soccer glory in the Asian Cup. With the tournament just around the corner, we'll introduce you to one of its most unusual squads, with most of the team's players not born in the country they represent. Hello, I'm Terry Martin. Good to have you with us. A Chinese spacecraft has made the first successful landing ever on the far side of the moon. It's the side that can never be seen from our planet. The mission is seen as key to China's ambitions to become a space superpower. The lunar probe is equipped with a rover and measuring devices and will carry out experiments involving planting seeds. Here's more. Well, for more now, let's bring in Keith Cowling. He's a former rocket scientist and editor of the blog NASA Watch. Thanks for being with us this morning. First of all, what made it so difficult to land a probe on the far side of the moon? It's never been done before. Okay, so it's a bit complicated, but why is it scientifically significant? What do we learn from all this? Now, China did not offer a live broadcast of this event. It uh, only announced it once it was done. Why the secrecy? Okay. Uh, now, China lands on the far side of the moon here. We've got India about to launch its second moon mission. Why are these developing powers investing so heavily in their space capabilities? Okay. Keith, thank you so much. That was Keith Cowing there, uh, an editor of the blog NASA Watch. A lot happening up there in space at the moment. America's space agency has also achieved a space exploration milestone. This one billions of kilometers from the sun. NASA's New Horizons probe sent the first detailed images of the space rock Ultima Tula. The pictures show what looks like a giant snowman. NASA has described it as an entirely new kind of world. The frozen rock at the edge of our solar system is the most distant object ever explored by humankind. Now to some of the other stories making news around the world today. Syria's defense minister says Kurdish forces are withdrawing from the northern Syrian town of Manbij. Uh, approximately 400 fighters have already left the town close to the Turkish border. The announcement came a few days after the Kurds asked Damascus to support them against an expected assault by the Turkish army. Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro has shifted control of indigenous land claims to the Agriculture Ministry. The move has stoked concerns among environmentalists and rights groups who fear Bolsonaro intends to further open up the Amazon rainforest for commercial exploitation. The Justice Ministry previously controlled indigenous land claims. The death toll has now risen to 37 after a suspected gas explosion caused the collapse of an apartment building in Russia. A number of residents are still missing, but officials say chances are slim they'll be found alive underneath the rubble. And parts of Finland have experienced the strongest winds ever recorded in the country. A powerful winter storm swept through from the north Tens of thousands of people have been without power, cell phone and transport services have been disrupted, and authorities have urged people to stay indoors. In the United States, Democrats take control of the House of Representatives today, ending the Republicans' monopoly on power in Washington under President Donald Trump. So, what's on their agenda? Well, the most pressing issue will be trying to end the government shutdown over funding for President Trump's border wall with Mexico. 
House Democrats are also expected to stand up for the Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare, amid legal challenges that several Republican-led states are waging. They're also likely to launch their own investigations into the dealings of the Trump White House and Russian interference in the 2016 election. The Democrats' leader, Nancy Pelosi, is expected to be elected Speaker of the House today, and she will not have much time to settle in because, as you know, the first confrontation with President Trump is already in full swing. Well, for more, let's bring in D.W. Stefan Siemens from our Washington Bureau. So, Stefan, starting today, the Democrats have control of the House of Representatives. How will this change things in Washington, particularly for President Trump? As you've indicated in your report, this will change everything. Okay, now, the new House uh, has its work cut out for it. Uh, the government, sh uh, partial government shutdown is underway. It's been ongoing now for two weeks. What do Americans make of this showdown between President Trump and Congress? How much longer could this partial government shutdown drag on, Stefan, and what effects could it have? Stefan, thank you so much for that analysis. Uh, D.W. Stefan Siemens there in Washington. You're watching DW News. Still to come, its fusion of design and architecture shaped the 20th century and still continues to inspire us today. 2019 marks 100 years since the founding of the renowned German art school Bauhaus. We take a look back at its influence. Football's Asian Cup gets underway this weekend, and the Philippines has perhaps the tournament's most unusual squad. The majority of the team's players were born and raised outside of the country, a factor that has helped it hit new heights, but also caused some controversy. 2019 marks 100 years since the founding of the renowned German art school Bauhaus. Though its life was brief, the school's emphasis on functional design and modern architecture has been hugely influential. Back in 1919, artists and craftsmen in Eastern Germany merged architecture and design to create numerous classics, objects that shaped the 20th century and continue to inspire today. German architect Walter Gropius was badly wounded in World War I. That made him wonder how to build a brighter future after so much suffering. He realized the key lay in new thinking that would enable innovative design. Gropius founded the Bauhaus School in the city of Weimar in 1919. Students were taught that art and artistry go hand in hand. Gropius felt that artists could be seen as artisans working at a higher level. This idea led to the birth of a new language of color and form. It was soon clear the Bauhaus movement represented more than a style, it became a philosophy. This famous Bauhaus lamp, still in production today, was developed by Wilhelm Wagenfeld, a Bauhaus student who went on to become a prominent industrial designer. But back then, the free spirit of the Bauhaus movement was frowned upon by conservative thinkers. The regional government slashed the Bauhaus budget in 1924, leaving the school no choice but to relocate to another city in a different state. That city was Dessau. Walter Gropius and his staff began working closely with industry, producing furniture made of tubular steel. Cantilever chairs are still known all over the world, especially those designed by Marcel Breuer. The Bauhaus architects set about designing mass residential housing, which meant many occupants in a relatively small space, but without a decline in living standards. Then, in 1929, the Nazis won Dessau's municipal elections. They decided to close the Bauhaus school. German-American architect Ludwig Mies van der Rohe, the Bauhaus director at the time, converted the school to a private enterprise in Berlin. It, too, was forced to close for good when the Nazis seized power in 1933. But the institution's modern concepts lived on. Jewish Bauhaus students who fled Nazi Germany designed modern buildings in what would later become the state of Israel and Nigeria. The Bauhaus school existed only 14 years, but a century after its founding, the guiding question posed by Walter Gropius is more relevant than ever. How do we want to design our future?
And we'll be broadcasting a documentary about the Bauhaus movement on Saturday. You can find out more online at dw.com slash arts21. Now, some business. And uh, is China losing its appetite for the iPhone, Monica? Well, that's what the Apple CEO...